I am Hajin Lee, a master's student from McGill University. I am honored to present our work here. In avatar therapy for schizophrenia, patients enter into a face-to-face -face conversation with an avatar representing their hallucination. Since most hallucinations are auditory, the avatar's vocal characteristics are considered to be central to the success of the therapy. This often raised the need for generating human speech with a voice that only exists in the patient's head. There exist some commercial tools that morph human voices, but they often simply control the pitch of the voice and result in significant audio distortion. Our study focused on creating a convincing match of these voices by proposing a map and two voice manipulation techniques. First, we will introduce the overall pipeline of our system. We collected approximately 2,500 voice samples from a huge corpus, then used an encoder to vectorize the timbre of each speaker. We applied the dimension reduction algorithm, UMAP, to the vectorized data and built the voice similarity map. On the map, users can select any voices that they perceive close to their target voice. Then by either using one of our two proposed techniques, they can customize the voice to converge towards an effective match for their target voice. The last component, neural vocoder, synthesized new speech by combining the output voice's timbre and a predefined text input. The map consists of 2,484 voices of different speakers. The voices can be played automatically on mouse hover and saved on mouse click. The saved voice samples are added to a list at the bottom. And from there, users can drag and drop the sample to start manipulating it. In latent parameter editing, users can use four sliders representing four parameters, pitch, resonance, hoarseness, and strength. These parameters were obtained by performing principal component analysis with the vectorized voice data. In voice mixing, users can listen to five samples that are synthesized by the computer. The five samples have interpolated timbre of the two mixed voices. Now let's take a look at the system in action. The first video demonstrates how latent parameter editing works. And the news director was paying me 22,000 a year. And the news director was paying me 22,000 a year. And the news director was paying me 22,000 a year. And the news director was paying me 22,000 a year. And the news director was paying me 22,000 a year. And the news director was paying me 22,000 a year. And the news director was paying me 22000 a year. Next video demonstrates how voice mixing works. Not because it's the right thing to do, but because I don't want to hurt her. Not because it's the right thing to do, but because I don't want to hurt her. Not because it's the right thing to do, but because I don't want to hurt her. Not because it's the right thing to do, but because I don't want to hurt her. Not because it's the right thing to do, but because I don't want to hurt her. We conducted two user studies. The first study took place remotely via video conference tool with 20 participants. Although our motivating use case is when we do not have any reference samples of the voice, but for the purpose of the study, participants were given such samples of the target voices. They were asked to generate the closest voice to their target voice in three different conditions. In the first condition, they only selected the closest voice to their match from the voice map. In the second condition, they selected the closest voice that manipulated its latent parameters. In the third condition, they selected two closest voices from the map and mixed them. We gave questionnaire to the participants to evaluate their perceptual performance of the proposed methods on a five-point Laker scale. Main questions included how close was their output to the target voice and how effective the four latent parameters were in their voice customization experience. As a result, we observed latent parameter editing was effective in improving the fidelity of the voices selected from the map exploration. We did not find any significant difference between latent parameter editing and voice fixing. Despite no difference in the performance, three quarters of the participants preferred voice mixing technique. We additionally investigated the difference in our four latent parameters. To do so, we recorded the number of times participants adjusted the parameters during the remote studies and asked their opinions on the importance of the parameter 
based on five-point liquor scale. We did not find a significant result from both exploration, but still observed a large effect size in the perceptual importance of the parameters. In the second study, we compared the performance under three conditions using our two synthesis techniques and a commercial voice morphing tool. The study was conducted in two steps. First, 16 members generated voices to match the voice of two celebrities under the three conditions. Then, 20 participants ran blind assessment on the voice samples generated from the previous session. They classified the voices into multiple clusters by judging similarity as they saw fit. We then ran cluster analysis and multidimensional scaling to analyze and visualize the similarity of the voices in the perceptual domain. We plotted the similarity values of the voices on a 2D plane. On this plane, the X and Y axis are dimensionless, but only represent the relative similarity of the voices. The closer the voices are located, the more similar they were perceived by participants. We can observe most voices generated from the commercial tool are located far away from the target voice, whereas with our synthesis techniques, the resulting voices are generally closer to the target. We then ran two-way ANOVA with two independent variables, method and voice. As a result, there was a significant difference between the commercial tool and our two synthesis techniques, and there was no significant difference between the celebrities' voices and between our proposed techniques. Although our preliminary results are promising, our system has some limitations. First, a single parameter in latent parameter editing sometimes affected more than one perceptual feature. This is because a principal component obtained from dimension reduction is not always perceived as a single feature in human perception. For example, our last parameter created more powerful speech when controlled in one direction because it increased the strength, speed, and volume of speech altogether. Second, our current techniques only supported English with North American accents. To expand the accent and language variation, Model training is required with a large amount of speech data in that particular accent or language. Here's our takeaway. We proposed a map exploration interface and two voice manipulation techniques. This allowed our users to either create fictitious voices or manifest perceptually meaningful characteristics of a voice. We hope our system supports patients suffering from schizophrenia by reproducing a convincing emulation that they perceive similar to their hallucination. Thank you for your attention.